there. I'm board certified professional organizer, Kathy Burns. I'm really glad you're here. This podcast is designed for busy entrepreneurs just like you who want to take better control of your business and move forward with less stress and more success. If this is your first time listening, then thanks for coming. The Organized Energized Podcast is produced for your enjoyment and show notes are found at thepodcast.organizedandenergized.com. Come back often and feel free to add this podcast to your favorite RSS feed or iTunes. You can also follow me on Twitter at Organized Energy and Facebook. All links are in the show notes. Now let's get into the show. Hi, everyone. This is Kathy, and I am today speaking with Susan Friesen. She owns eVision Media, and we're going to talk about how to leverage your brand positioning to up-level your business and profits. We all want to do that, right? We need more business and more profits. And Susan is great to talk to because she's a visionary brand strategist who provides guidance for business visionaries to help them create a customized plan for their professional online presence. That way they can build their business with ease and greater confidence. So let's jump into it and let's talk to Susan. Hi everyone, I'm back with Susan Friesen. We are gonna talk about branding. We're gonna talk about how to be more visible and have a more cohesive brand. And we're gonna jump right into it and welcome Susan to Z Show. Thanks for having me, Kathy. I'm so excited to be here today. Yeah, we're going to have some fun. So give me a little bit about your backstory. Like, how did you become the branding expert? Yeah, well, it was definitely not something that I set the intention on doing. Uh, I've been in I've been doing this for over 20 years and uh, and really uh, I got into this business uh, accidentally. I had no intention of running my own business, but uh, but one thing I did know is that uh, I got into this industry because I knew the future was that contraption that was sitting on my desk called the computer that I had no idea what to do with. Couldn't even send an email, but I knew that was the future. And so I set my sights on figuring out a career path using it. Wow, that's pretty amazing. So I know in the beginning of my career, I've been doing about 19 years. I, I kept I kept blowing up computers. I kept getting that bomb sign on my Mac. And, you know, it was like <laughs> trial and error, trial and error. Uh, so that's pretty good. So what did you start out or what did you do prior to starting your launching your own company? Well, um, you mean what what did I do before all of this? Because yes. that yeah, I mean I I was I've been an entrepreneur at heart for a long time, but it was never all that serious. Like I had a a, a cottage craft business back in the 80s when you know the Christmas crafts and the country crafts were all the rage. Uh, I did some full finishing. I worked at a telephone answering service. Like I was all over the map. Nice. Uh, yeah. But then once once I figured out, okay, it's got to be in the computer. And then I went to uh, Vancouver Film School to learn multimedia. And, and I haven't looked back since. Wow. Okay. So what, what's your big takeaway? If you had to say, like, as you think back on your Vancouver Film, st uh, film School studies, What's a big takeaway that you came away with that what, from, from learning about media? Oh, um, it, it just solidified that I knew I was in the right place. You know that feeling when, uh, when, when you hit upon something and you just know, you just know that you are in the right place at the right time. And that's what happened to me. And, and I, I just dove in and learned everything I could, soaked it up. And of course, we're talking over 20 years ago. So everything online was very new and, and exciting back then as well. Um, and, and I remember learning and, and hearing that back then, uh, the only people who made money online were porno websites. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it might have been true. I don't know. Maybe it probably back then. was. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are on Zoom and on YouTube and on all, every can, every single thing we can think of. Yeah, that's fantastic. So, um, tell me about uh, when you launched your agency. So you said it was by accident, which is kind of ironic. But yeah. I find that people launch businesses whenever they think, whenever, like you said, you get that click, and you're like, ah, oh, that's what I love. That's what I can do. Talk to me about the first client that you landed with for your company. Oh my gosh, you're really asking me to tap into my brain waves here, my, my memory cells. 
So what happened was uh, I, I was the um, webmaster for the Vancouver Film School. I got that job right out of the multimedia program. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the webmaster for the Vancouver Sun and Province. I mixed up those two words. And so that's our local newspaper here in BC, Canada. And, and, and then after about a year and a half, that position was let, they just decided they didn't need a webmaster anymore. And so at that point, I decided to go back to school and get my business degree in computer information systems. So while I was studying that, uh, I needed something to do with my time, so I started to go out to these uh, women's networking groups. And I had no intention, like I said, of starting my business. I wanted to be a chief information officer at some big corporation. And okay. uh, but so it was kind of cool that I had that mindset because when I went to these networking events, I wasn't there with dollar signs in my eyes. I wasn't there seeking my next client they just naturally came to me because they knew that I knew what I was doing and all and everything was just coming up you know everybody wanted to start their own business and I had all kinds of women coming to me saying hey I hear you do websites can you build me one I go sure you know and they get a really great deal because it wasn't a business it was just you know kind of a hobby at that point and you know what I would say there's about three clients um who are still with me today and we're talking like 18 years later, they're still with me. Many of them, you know, they, I think they all have different businesses now, but one is a music teacher. The other uh, taught uh, cooking classes and, uh, and the other one was a, a home stager. And yeah, so I, I just absolutely love that's That was part of why I ended up running my own business is because I found, I discovered how much I absolutely loved helping women, especially women entrepreneurs, build their business and, and, and just do be that helping hand, be that lending hand to get them on the right track. I think that's so fantastic. First off, I have to laugh because, you know, the newspaper, they no longer needed a webmaster. Now I'm sure they have a staff of like, you know, five webmasters <laughs> doing, doing their tech stuff. It's like, okay, now we're not going to need a webmaster. But the yeah. fact that you launched, I mean, I remember back when I launched, you know, trying to get someone that was decent to design a website that didn't, you know, make you bankrupt was like a big thing. You yeah. couldn't find any. I mean, I spent tens of thousands of dollars on website, you know, development way back in the day for things that didn't even really work. And uh, so you you launched at the perfect time. And I, I love the fact, I think this is a good takeaway too uh, for the listeners out there that, you know, when you go into a networking event, don't walk in with, with dollar signs in your eyes. Walk in with, you know, how, here's my expertise. How can I be of service? You know, or, you know, here's my expertise. What do you need to know? You know, yeah. how, how can I assist? Um, not like you're trying to land a client. And that's why, you know, then you become the magnet. So I think that's that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it is, I, I still preach that to this day. It's just so important because we can viscerally feel it. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, that's, I have evolved into being this brand strategist, right? And it's all about your brand positioning. And if you walk into a room, with that neediness about you, people will sense it. It's that visceral feeling that they'll see, they'll sense it and, and, and you'll repel them. They'll, they'll walk away. They don't want to have to talk to somebody who's just desperate for a sale. Yeah. Yeah. Cause there must be something wrong. Yeah. Even though they're my nubby, you know, it, it's just, we just have that in, that instinct about us for sure. Yeah. So, um, what okay so as a brand strategist what do you think is the most important thing when you're looking at your website what's the thing you should look for uh to see if you're going astray for your messaging or your branding or whatever uh, where where do you look to start you know that that's actually a really loaded question because brand <laughs> positioning is a big big topic and it's everything to do about your business and of course yes your website is kind of like the the storefront version of your business, whether you, even if you have a brick and mortar store or not, uh, people still expect to see an online presence. And so it's that first impression that is going to make or break whether or not you have gained the trust of the person coming to the site and whether or not they feel like they have landed in the right place. 
And so we look at um, the, the visual component. Obviously, the visual is the very first thing that people see and they get an instant reaction. It's, it, you know, some people say you have five seconds to create a, an, a positive impression, but it's actually five milliseconds. And so that instant response needs to be looked at. So visually how it looks and does it represent your brand positioning properly? And I, I mean, I could talk for an hour about this. So <laughs> <laughs> I know I gave you such a wide open question, but you just keep going. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, so from the, I'll just kind of focus on the visual part because, because it is that instant impression. If you've lost them in that inst in that first instant impression, then it's really, really hard to get them back. And they've hit the back button and they're on moved on to your competitor. You've lost them. So mm -hmm. that, that um, visual first impression needs to depict your brand personality and it needs to showcase immediately what you do you know and it's and and i say that but it's actually the opposite it's not it is about what you do but it's more about how can you help the person who has come to the website is there an alignment there do they get that you get them and their challenge or whatever it is that they're looking for they're instantly looking to see if they've landed on the right place and and so the the headline the text uh the visuals how the copy is written, all of that needs to resonate with them to gain the trust that they need to feel before they will make any next step. And so that's kind of it in a nutshell. And that visceral response is very important too. And I'm sure you and our listeners and our watchers today have also experienced that feeling. You don't know why, but you've gone to somebody's website and there's just that, hmm. Huh, that, that sense that I'm hmm and then you go like you don't even wait to find out any further you don't scroll nothing you just go and that's what I taught that's what I mean about that visceral feeling they need to know immediately that this person can be trusted and and that it's up to date and it doesn't look like a 1980s website and all that kind of stuff yeah <laughs> or like a 30 year old headshot but of course they don't know that anyhow but you can kind of tell um, yeah. And, and yeah. what about colors? How do you feel about colors? You know, I've been as an image consultant, I think colors are really important. And I, I find people getting taken down the road of a webmaster telling them what colors they should use because what's current and mm -hmm. as opposed to what colors are they like, you know, what are their colors? What, what how do they vibe? Uh, how do you feel about that? Oh, yeah, I'm so with you that there, there is no way a webmaster should be telling you uh, what colors you should be using unless they are very well versed in branding and brand positioning because the color all is it's very strategic and it is all about um resonating again with your ideal client and depicting your own brand personality your own brand essence has to come through in in the colors that are chosen and so there is color theory involved so for for instance um you know if if uh if, if you're a bank that's why we typically always see banks in, in using some sort of a shade of blue because blue resonates with the word trust wow. but um but they're also like there's variety of different blues i'm wearing a blue it uh, looks like you're wearing black today but you know there's lots of different blues that you can use that will still depict your brand essence and mm -hmm. and be able to accurately describe you know what kind of personality that you have and that will still resonate with your ideal client but at the end of the day it does all depend on who your ideal client is what their expectations are of you what are they looking for in you and and what kind of experience are they expecting to get from you and color actually plays a role in all of that yeah i truly believe that so tell me about a time when you felt like you were just okay so you're jamming out like you got all these clients you landed clients you didn't even think you were going to land clients now you have all these clients and tell me about a time when you just felt like you were a little bit overloaded and overwhelmed and what did you do to get yourself back in alignment and moving down the road of having a happy susan well what makes you think i've done that <laughs> <laughs> Because you got a smile on your face and I know you're really good at what you do. 
No, I, I'm just teasing. Um, so there's, there's, as every entrepreneur goes through, there's always these phases uh, as we go through our, our, our business life cycle. And the, the very first time that I started to feel overwhelmed at that point in time, I was a one person show. I did everything. I did the, the website design and the development and the marketing, like, you know, because I'm kind of a generalist, even though my specialty is in, in brand positioning, I'm a generalist and everything to do with creating an online presence and marketing it. And it, over the years, I've, I've learned a lot. And so, uh, but this is early on, probably a couple of years into it, and I was getting overwhelmed. And I was realizing at that point in time um, that, okay, it's, it's time to make a shift. And so uh, one of the best pieces of advice that I ever received was hire your weaknesses and focus on your strengths. And yeah. so I knew that because technology, especially back then, still now, was moving at such a rapid pace, I could not keep up with that. You know, the way websites were built back then are night and day to how they're built now. Yeah. And so my first hire was a, uh, a student programmer at the local college. And, and that immediately relieved me of that stress and overwhelm because now I could just delegate all of that techie stuff over to him. And I didn't have to put that pressure on me to stay on top of it. I, I needed to still know what, what was going on, what was changing, what was needing to be done, but I didn't no longer had to put that pressure on me to learn how to do it all. Yeah. And, and I think that's a, a big lesson that any entrepreneur can learn from is you don't need to know how you just need to know what and know who to delegate to who can take over that how for you. That's really, really solid advice. I say that all the time. And, you know, and also job out what you hate doing, even if you can do it. <laughs> oh, life's too short. Oh. Why, why do something you hate? You, you didn't start your business because you want, you wanted to do all this stuff that you hate doing. <laughs> exactly. Precisely. Uh, I love that. So what's your favorite organizing hack whenever you're uh, working all along throughout the week? Uh, what what do you love? Do you have a program that you like uh, or a practice that you do? Well, you know, um, part of my uh, DNA is being strategic and organized and detail orientated. So I've built my life around strategy and keeping organized. I mean, I can't fathom not being organized. And so, uh, so that's an interesting question because, you know, everything I do is, is probably could be refined, but, uh, you know, it is organized, but I think there's kind of two tools that I use every day, all day long. One of them is, um, Microsoft Outlook. It is not just for my email, but even that, like as, as a client, uh, requests come in. I keep it organized on who I delegated it to and, uh, you know, so that I know exactly where we're at at any given moment, but it also helps me with my tasks and my, and my calendar. My calendar is hooked up with my calendar. And so that, uh, you know, appointments can be coming in and my calendar is automatically updated. So uh, there's just so many things about Outlook that I love as opposed to using something like Gmail, which I can't fathom using for you know, running a business with. Uh, and the other tool that I use all the time is Evernote. And speaking of, you know, keeping track of everything that's going on, my Evernote is full <laughs> of notes. <laughs> yeah. And it's all nicely organized in categories. And, you know, it's easy for me to go and find what I need to know at a, at a moment's notice. And I, I sit here with three monitors in front of me. My Evernote is always open in this monitor. My Outlook is always open in this monitor, <laughs> so I'm good I to go. It. I need I need you to have some strategies there, and yeah. uh, you know Outlook is good for sure. But you know I do use Google Suite for everything, yeah. but I also love Evernote, um, and I love the fact that you can take Evernote everywhere with you. You know, it yes. can be on any device that you need it to be on like that. So that's, that's a brilliant thing. Uh, what would you tell your younger self if you had to give her some advice right now and you're looking at your 17 year old and, and you're, you're going to say to yourself, what? Oh, that's, um, you know what? I, I, when I look back at who I was back when I was 17, 18 years old, um, I had a really bad case of not believing in myself. Mm. 
Mm. So, uh, so definitely if I could give myself that advice, you know, believe and trust in yourself and, and stop waiting for outside people and things and miracles to happen that all of a sudden you're going to have that self-confidence that you need. I really, really lacked that self-confidence back then. Mm. Yeah, and it takes growing up to get that oftentimes, but it sounds like you really went on your way and found your path pretty quickly. So your intuitive nature knew what you should be doing anyhow, whether you believe it or not. And obviously, when you got into the networking part of it, you had that inner, you know, that inner, oh, people are like, oh, I like her. Maybe she knows what she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because that all builds in that trust, right? Like, so even even today in today's world my advice would be is to you know stop thinking that you're an imposter and that you don't know everything yet and you haven't learned everything yet and your ducks aren't all lined up in a row yet because people will pick up that vibe just like what you said they will they will pick up on it that uh -huh, there's something off about her she doesn't quite give me the confidence that i need in order to uh you know get where i need to be and yeah. so it's important. Yeah. So tell me about a recent win, something that just really made your bell, your heart sing or your bells ring recently that happened to you. And the second part of it is how do you celebrate that? Yeah. Um, recent wins. Well, you know, I, I, hmm, I, uh, I downplay my wins and I'm, that's really bad. <laughs> I don't this sit back I'm, and, and I'm asking this question to all my podcast guests because I realized that I didn't do it either. Yeah. And so really 2023 is all about let's celebrate. Let's figure out how to celebrate. Let's not underplay our greatness. Let's celebrate. Even even the smallest little thing is a win. Let's learn how to acknowledge it and celebrate it because then we get more. Oh, yeah, I love that. And that's such a great thing. I think I'm going to uh, make that a part of my year this year, too, because uh, I'm I'm notorious for going, yeah, that was great. But, you know, and then, you know, de right. deflate it. But uh, it's, um, it's a few things that I'm very proud of that that are considered wins is uh, we won um, a few years ago the uh, Abbotsford, which is where I lived, uh, the Abbotsford Table of Commerce, uh, best home-based business of the year. And, and also we won twice the, well, it wasn't a win. It was in, we landed in the top five finalists for the best company in BC through the Small Business BC Awards. Nice. Uh, and we did that we met that twice and it was quite an extensive process to for all of both of those awards it was quite an extensive process it wasn't just voting it was actually you know doing a presentation in front of a panel of judges and and so i'm very very proud of that and um you know sometimes uh, many times i forget to mention it <laughs> so <I think laughs> you have that little logo all over your website right and on your business cards small business of the year yeah, yeah, it's and and this is what we do. We 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 are like, okay, on to the next thing. Right. You know, when I published my book, it's like, oh, now I have to market. I didn't even stop to celebrate the first time, right? Yeah. So, you know, we we just uh so I'd like you and everybody listening to think about when you have wins, no matter no matter how small or how big, how are you going to celebrate? Like, what does that mean to you? What is a celebration to you? Yeah. And, uh, you know, let's let's think about that, because oftentimes, you know, I don't know. How do I celebrate? Hmm, I don't know. You know? Yeah. Well, um, one thing that I do do and and it's a habit that I have formed over the last year or so uh, on and off before then is to every night write in my gratitude journal. So that wow. to me is a mini celebration of just being, you know, writing down what I'm grateful for that day. Uh, whether it's big or small. And uh, I think that makes a huge difference because when we start focusing on all of the positive things that happen to us, the universe is just going to give us more of that. Mm -hmm. okay. Especially right before we go to sleep. Yeah. You, know, you, you wake up, you wake up with what you go to sleep with. So gratitude journals at night are awesome. Yeah. Love it. I knew yeah. we resonated. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, is there anything that I should have asked you that we haven't really talked about yet that you really want to tell the audience? Well, 
I don't, you know, I, I've been, it's more and more prevalent in my mind when, especially when we see on social media, how many entrepreneurs, especially the females are struggling, you know, they're just not getting where they want to be and they're struggling and they, and they want to keep, you know, blaming this, blaming that or whatever. And, um, and, and so the, and, and part of that, the part of that struggle is there are talk about, you know, uh, you know, putting ourselves down and not having that confidence. And part of that is uh, a little bit of self self um, degradation of of not being like her over there, not being like that person and not having the success like that person does. Yeah. And when I take a look at who these people are who are really struggling, I, I realize that a lot of them are visionaries and and visionaries typically don't have um you know that detail orientated mindset right so they have lots of vision lots of ideas lots of things gone the works they're always going they're always moving but nothing ever gets to fruition enough for them to actually start reaping any of the benefits of their vision and and they start beating themselves up because they're not being able to finish what they've started. And, and so I, I wanted to kind of share, like, that's okay. That's who you are. And, and uh, I'm not a visionary. So I would love to have a little bit of that DNA, but it's not in your DNA. And, uh, and this is where, when we were earlier talking about delegating, this is where it's so important to start to realize that this is the time you have to delegate to the person who can be that detail oriented person like you. Yeah. that you need not like you but you need to have the the yang to your yin or whatever uh in order to be able to actually fulfill what it is you, you do and i find that that's the kind of person who uh i really attract a lot in my business the ones who need that person to take their big vision and break it down into bite-sized pieces and be able to give them the strategy that they need and and keep them on track with that strategy and fulfill it right to the very end um yeah otherwise it's it's a uphill battle if you're gonna try and do that all by yourself yeah i agree and visionaries have a hard time with that and something that uh you touched on before too is you know comparing yourself to others you know that's just silly because you are like no one else so comparing yourself to others is just kind of demoralizing and degrading because it's making yourself less than yeah uh, so i appreciate you saying that as well so talk yeah. to me about i know you probably have a free gift for the audience uh something they can download that will help them come up with a better branding a better message or just a better overall presence uh with their company what is it that you'd like to offer yeah i've got a free report well there's actually a couple of things first of all uh you know on my social media i offer a lot of tips and strategies and um and information and even motivation and all that kind of stuff on social media so if you go to my website evisionmedia.ca and just scroll down to the bottom all of my social media accounts are there and just go ahead and follow me there um, but i also have a uh, a website guide and it's it's for um you know we were talking about you know that first impression of your website right and so i have a website guide to tell you what you need to know in order to make sure that your website is actually giving the right impression to the right people so it's called six critical steps to creating a successful and profitable website and uh, and if you just go to businesswebsiteguide.com it's a free yeah. download and uh and go ahead and grab that nice nice and i'll have the links below obviously in the show notes um but i love that you have a free that you have a website for the actual download that's that's good marketing girl <laughs> <laughs> uh, well i really appreciate your time and i know that uh, people have learned a lot and uh, i wish you a fulfilling and fantastic 2023 filled with a lot of celebrations as with everybody else that's listening out there let's go ahead and celebrate girls let's do it yeah great let's do it awesome and thanks so much kathy i really loved our conversation today absolutely thank you for your time oh you're welcome hey thanks for listening to this podcast i hope you enjoyed this episode and if you want to hear more feel free to subscribe on the platform of your choice also if you feel so inclined i would truly appreciate a good rating from you to me have a stellar day